when we free ourselves up from judgment, from placing expectations, ideas onto others and ourselves, that's when we truly can heal. But we don't really know the battles people are facing. So all we are meant to do, and the greatest religious or spiritual or whatever you want to box it in thing we can do is be kind. Hello, dear friends. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I think it's evening for most of my audience. And welcome to my Honest Conversations today. I have a very interesting guest. Uh, she, is, um, she is one of the leading experts in healthy lifestyle in US. Uh, and we are going to be talking about making shift in your life. So I'm going to have a, a conversation with Danette May. I'm just waiting her, for her to join me. Uh, it is going to be an unusually short conversation because we had a bit of a mismatch regarding the timing, but uh, not a thing to worry about. I'm sure it will still be good. Oh, hey, good morning. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. How are you? I, I'm good. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited to talk to you because I just got done reading the most epic post by you. <laughs> You're a brilliant writer. I'm like, whoa, like this is so good and so deep and so needed. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a challenge for me personally to, you know, to balance between uh, being a, uh, you know, universally acceptable and also honest and not, uh, n you know, not, not um, sugar glazing your truth, uh, you know, to be heard. So, Danette, uh, I know you have a rather short time to, to spend with me, but I wanted to ask, so the topic is uh, creating shift in your life. And I know that you are into lifestyle, into healthy lifestyle. So you are like super fit. You talk about nutrition, about exercise. Uh, how much do you work with practical things like, like that? Like, you know, what you can do with your body and how much of that is the work with your mind? Oh, wow. That's such a great question. I'm going to pull the phone closer so you make sure you guys can hear me. But, um, you know, for me, I don't think there's any separation between what's going on within the body, what's going on the soul, what's going on within the mind, I feel that they're all tied together. And when you shift one, the other shifts. So if you're, if you're working on your mindset, and you're working on shifting that mental state of where I'm at today, where I'm going, um, your body will also want to shift, it will also ask and require um, different things from you, you'll start to feel like, oh, I want to do this with my body, and the body will shift to match the mind. And then also, mm -hmm. if you start to work with your body, your body will also start to ask the mind to shift as well. So they're all very, very um, tied together. Mm, that's interesting because, you know, uh, well, I've been in personal growth for a very long time and there are good teachers who uh, have issues with their bodies, you know, either excess weight or, or maybe uh, health issues. And how much of that is actually related? Uh, because just the, just the more practical example, I have a friend who is, teaching a very interesting uh, transformational course and she got diagnosed with cancer at a fairly early age and for her it was a huge um, like a huge uh, let down because totally. you know I, so, so what what how do you what do you make out of this kind of situation where you think that you work so hard and yet you know you get some issues like like a disease or, or weight you can't get get rid of I love where your your questions are going. So I actually have friends as well, one being a hypnotherapist. And I remember sitting on the back deck with her because she's like a world renowned hypnotherapist. And she was telling me how she had dreamed of like, she was using her practices and her tools to do have this perfect birth with her first son. And she was like, visualizing it doing all the work and the time came. And it was a very difficult birth. And it was disruptive to her because she's like, I'm doing all the tools. I'm doing all the practices. And then she went into deep depression after her son um, came, just that postnatal depression. And she was so upset with herself because she was like, I'm supposed to be this life-changing hypnotherapist. And I'm supposed to be able to control these types of things. And what I saw with her and what I'll get to in just a moment is her narrative changed. So why this was so profound for her to have this experience as a hypnotherapist. Can you imagine how 
messed up so many people would feel if they did, took her course, they felt like they had, did all the things right. And then they had this, like this difficult birth that sometimes the body's like, I'm going this way, the baby's coming this way, and you're going to experience these emotions. I don't care what your tools are, but this is the lesson you need to learn, or this is what's coming up and through. And so she changed her narrative in her hypnotherapy sessions around a birth. And now it's around whatever may be, whatever may come, I accept and I just want the best results for me and my baby, whatever is the highest results for all. Instead mm -hmm. of it has to be this easy birth, it has to feel good. It ha you know what I mean? We as humans mm -hmm. put this stigma around it. But I also, I really, really believe that even if we have the tools today, like I, I read about um, you know, think about Wayne Dyer working on his mind and he gets cancer as well, right? What about those people that you're like, hey, I thought you could mind shift disease yeah. in your body. What's going on here? I truly believe on a really cellular level that we have um, memory from past lineage, from our ancestors coursing in our DNA. And a lot of times we're dealing with these, like what we would call subconscious or even with shadows that might be have been passed down from ancestors that we are now processing. And so sometimes you think, oh, I have all the tools for what I know in my conscious mind of what I need to fix. But it's like, what is that underlying wounding that you need to go and course correct as well that's manifesting in disease in the body? Oh my God, that's, I, I'd like to talk about that if we get the time, but I want to ask this thing. So do you think, and it ties a little bit to the topic that I, you just commented, my, my last post, because a lot of people, especially in personal growth, if you do something which is out of line, you know, with, with common perception of what is right, then you feel yourself like a failure. Is, is getting sick a failure for a person who is into, let's say, healthy lifestyle? Is, um, you know, is failing a business a failure for a person who's talking about success? Or, or you know, divorce is it a failure for, and, and right now I'm talking very close to home, for a person who is in personal growth? What do you feel about that? And how do you, like, have you had failures like that? <laughs> okay guys so i've been through divorce i've lost a child <laughs> oh. i've had many sicknesses many operations um and i'm also this life coach and health coach and i've had all of it and here's what i know is that the pain is the way through and if we look at everyone listening right now, if you looked at the moments that were the most hardest, the moments where you were the sickest, maybe you were like vomiting and you had like the most worst virus or bacteria, you were like, I don't know what that was. Maybe you've lost a child. Maybe you've had these grand dreams of this perfect marriage and the ending and this sitting on the porch as an older couple and it has been totally pulled underneath your feet. Let me ask you like to really look within yourself like, hasn't that taught you something? Hasn't that shown you your truest character? Hasn't that taught you that you are grittier, that you're more tenacious than you ever even thought, as well as it unraveled this almost like non-judgmentalness within your system, which that gets to disease. So I want to share with you, that's what all my chaos, all my hard times dismantled my judgments towards others. Because then I was like, oh my gosh, I'm in it. I'm that okay. girl that you read about in magazines when you're getting your nails done or you're on the plane ride that you're just looking at and being like, oh, I love this gossip. I'm like, I'm that girl. And what helped me was going, oh my gosh, if I'm that girl and I need to get into self-love, I get to dismantle all these judgments I've had on others, which ultimately, you guys, when you dismantle judgment towards others, it frees your body up for more healing. And that to me has been the most profound research I've found, but not only within my own body, with working with high level clients is when we free ourselves up from judgment, from placing expectations, ideas onto others and ourselves, that's when we truly can heal. So we just talked about failures and a lot of people have been through very hard and dark times lately, obviously, with uh, everything that's going on. It kind of seems like uh, it's, a, it's a whole measure of darkness happening. Uh, so do the shifts that you talk about, do they happen uh, through that, through painful experience? Or are you talking about shifts which you can uh, manifest through just uh, the will, the desire uh, to, to, to do something differently, you know, to play bigger? Does it have to be through through tough times or you know how, how, how do you look at that <laughs> oh so good okay I, I brought up tough times 
but as a this is where the human mind can get so like I'm watching my own human mind because we look at all these people and even myself which has been a shining light for me you go oh they went through tough times I got to create tough times I got to yes. create the drama so that I can so I can buckle up and I can show that I'm a hero and I'm a warrior and the truth is is that transformation doesn't always have to look dark transformation doesn't always have to look like anger transformation doesn't always have to look like rage and yes that can look like that so forgive yourself if you're feeling those things but or not even forgive yourself just say i'm feeling it and that's my way through but if you're not and you're like i tend to go to love is something wrong with me or i tend to go towards peace or i tend to go through sadness or whatever the feeling may be you don't you may not even feel the rage you might be like celebrating <laughs> And I just want to remind you that everybody has a different way of processing. We have to remember that we have so much in our DNA that's not even just us coming here in this lifetime of what we're perceiving. And so if we have all these things in our DNA and we don't even know whose DNA is coursing in our DNA, which ultimately everyone's DNA is coursing in one another's DNA, um, then you're going to have a gamut of emotion and a gamut of experiences. And so don't get caught up in judging yourself that it has to look a certain way for transformation. Mm. How do you get your transformation? Ooh, I wrote about uh, this in my book and I, I really wanted to show the reader because I've had transformation. The, the right. I, I, I wrote about it being in a bikini and doing oh. a bikini competition. <laughs> I was like, here's the deal. Like sometimes we think transformation is deep meditation. It's going to a yoga retreat in Costa Rica. It's having this painful experience. And yes, it can be all those things, but oftentimes it can be something so interesting, like doing a bikini competition, or maybe it's just a conversation on the couch with a dear friend, or maybe it's in the darkness of your own home, sitting in your messy home, sitting amongst dishes that you have your transformation. Just be aware that transformation can happen moment by moment in any place, in any situation, and it doesn't have to look like one way or another. Mm. So what do you need for a transformation to happen? Um, I, because, you, you know, you say it can happen anywhere, uh, but there are so many people who live through their lives year after year to get experiences. Like all of us are getting the experience of being stuck at home. <laughs> yeah. uh, what, what makes it happen? Do you have a recipe for it? Ooh, I would love to say that I do. I would love to <laughs> there you go one, two, three. <laughs> and I think a lot of, leaders or even coaches want to have a recipe for people and there's this inner part of me saying Danette don't give a recipe because here's the deal is that as soon as I give you a recipe you're going to try to follow the recipe and you might miss the point and I believe that transformation is going to happen in its way it's going to happen for you and I challenge each person listening that and and even myself that I don't get caught up in looking at social media get caught up in looking at my friends or my family members and go that's how they did it it must be that way for me too um I think if you're asking yourself every day what am I meant to learn from this what is the higher good from this what is you know what is the message in this mess I think that that is your pathway and however it unfolds can unfold how it's going to be versus taking a recipe from me or taking a recipe from someone else. Like just be very mindful of understanding that there's a lot of recipes out there. There's a lot of <laughs> twos and a lot of steps and a lot of number one, do this. And I'm one of those people that have done that, but like, let's take ourselves out of that for a moment and understand that we're multidimensional and that we get to have the experience we're going to have and we get to take as long as we're going to take and we get to be as messy in the processes we're going to be or we can be fast in it and it can happen like that. Just don't get caught up in a story and let yours unprocess how it's going to. Mm. Interesting. Uh, that's, so you mentioned, uh, ask yourself every day, what does that mean? Is that, does that mean that you, how do you feel? I don't know, it's, it's a little weird question, but how do you feel yourself? Do you get an, an opportunity for transformation every day? You yeah. Personally? Yeah, every day. <laughs> just yesterday, just yesterday. And I think your post this morning triggered something in me that someone texted me late at night. I was just doing my journal writing and I had a girlfriend text me and she said, I had a dream. 
And I dreamed that back in my days when I was a big drug addict and I was a massive partier, that same addiction that was raging there that I fought and I got out of is raging inside of me around social media. Ooh. That every time I want to post and every time I feel I have to post something around the change in Black Lives Matter and all the different things that are happening, whether it's that or something else, I feel like I'm not doing enough. I feel like I've got to go to the party. I've got to get the hit. I've got to get the likes. I've got to get the acknowledgement. She's like, it feels like the same drug. It feels like the same addiction. And I was revisited in a dream that I was having the same addiction happening for me in my quest on social media and being an influencer and showing up. Mm -hmm. And I was like, damn, that's so good. That's so good. So you guys, you're moving in the house with me. <laughs> but, uh, it's okay. Yeah, like that's, that was so profound. And then when I read your post, so transformation is just being curious and going, whoa, the way I've been looking at something, is that true? I question myself all the time. Oh, my husband's X, Y, Z, or my daughter's doing X, Y, Z. And if it feels like a judgment, I ask myself, is that true? Is that really true? And then I can journal on it and unravel. Is it really true? And most of the times it's not true. It's a story that came from somewhere else that I'm pinning to that situation or that person. Mm. Thank you. It's, uh, I really love your answers so much thank you so much but i'm mindful of the time so uh since we'll have to finish uh, any minute now i want to ask you just just for, for goodbyes is there anything you'd like to tell the people who are going to watch that you know it's 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 funny times not funny maybe sad times maybe hard times maybe dark times it's strange times any any parting message to people you know to make the shift and not to not to become worse through that um, something that's, can you hear me okay? Because I set my phone down. Um, something that's ringing really loud in my ears right now is that we don't know what battles people are facing. We don't have any clue if it's an inner battle, an outer family battle, or maybe like a, a community or a global battle. We don't really know the battles people are facing. So all we're meant to do, and the greatest religious or spiritual or whatever you want to box it in thing we can do is be kind just be kind mm -hmm. only job is to be kind and that's what's really coming up for me um and so as we're navigating new times um as we're navigating all the different gamuts of emotion can we just be kind can we be kind to however someone's doing something versus how you think they should be doing it um what's Believing versus what you think they should believe. Just really, your job is to be kind. You know, I, I tell you honestly, it resonates. And to prove the point, and we were not, uh, we didn't coordinate. You see what I'm wearing? Oh, oh wow. Kind and brave. <laughs> it's, it's from Cinderella movie. <laughs> so, <It's> so thank, <laughs> I thank feel you. like the bravest yeah. thing we can do is be kind. How brave is that to be kind to someone that totally thinks differently than us? How brave of it are we if we if we show up in kindness to someone that's hurt us? Like, how brave is that? Like, that's next level. That's true. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Janet. I know I need to run, uh, but I want to traditionally ask the people who are in here in the yeah. message to send a heart to Danette uh, uh, <laughs> for, for being so... So, you know, in such a short period of time, just opening up so much, giving so much wisdom. So thank you so much. I'm sure we'll, we'll have to have another conversation. People I'm actually probably yes. open to it. And I will make sure I schedule time because I'm in love with your depth, Christina. I, I think everyone should be reading what you're writing. You have a way with your words. I do hope that you write a book if you haven't already. I was thinking that when I've read your posts a couple of times, I'm like, she has a way with words that I have not seen in a long time and a way to unravel truth and shadow and rawness and weave it into love. And it's so good. So I, I really, I really love reading what you have to say and just your depth. Thank you so much. It really means a lot. Thank you a lot. <laughs> So, uh, and um, see you guys soon, hopefully. And maybe we'll have a conversation with you tonight when I'm back in Europe with good internet and less oh, of a time. I would love that. I would love that. And thanks you guys so much for listening and being a part of this. It's been fun. And hopefully I can come back because I would love to jam with you, Christina. Maybe I bring you on my IG and we can jam mm. there. That would be amazing. Thank you. It would be great. Okay. Love Bye. you guys. Bye-bye.